I may have to do that a few more times. It seems like his pill that I gave him is, uh, is wearing off. So I don't know where these little bits are coming from. I'm just going to move this and wipe everything down before I keep getting more. It could be down here, it could be down there. I don't know. I keep getting in my cane. might take a while. I better speed it up. Okay, so I think that's a decent size. I didn't go too much farther down. It gives me an idea of how, how far I've gone from the first one. It's not huge. However, I got thinking about it and trying to figure out how to decide where I was going to, uh, where I was gonna cut it so I'd have enough for the top and the bottom. And I decided the smartest thing to do would be to cover the top and then take whatever was left and make it smaller. I thought, okay, that's brilliant. Maybe I'll do that. So here is the top, right? And I'm kind of trying to figure out if I can get four slices across that. So let's try a few and see. If it's too soft, I might have to stick it in the fridge for a little bit. But it doesn't look too bad. It's not it's not squishing too awful much on the edge. Always hair everywhere with this. I'm not sure if it's actually dog hair because it's not that long or if it's lint or what the heck it is. But there's always those short little fuzzies everywhere. Alright, so there's air bubble. There's an air bubble. There's four slices. And basically what I want to do here is I want to see this is how our pattern's looking at the moment. If I put this like this, that one doesn't look like an exact match, so that must be that side. There's always a little bit of a difference from one side to the other. And if you don't line them up properly, see that looks like that. That one matches that one. The shape of this one and the shape of that one may have started out the same, but by the time you get done reducing it, they're very seldom actually the same. So you kind of have to flip them around until you figure out which ones look the most alike. Okay, so I think there's the four across. And that pretty much, if I'm, I'm not quite centered, but it pretty much goes from where this part starts rounding down across. So that might mean I use 16 pieces. Oops, I just stabbed that with my fingernail. It might take me 16 pieces to go from this edge to this edge, this edge to that edge in the big pieces, which is great because the side, like so, I'm going to need canes that are about that big for the side, right? And so if I make the next cane that big with the rest of this, then I can make a smaller accent cane for this edge and put it on this, this sloped edge here. And that should be interesting. So I'm just trying to center this a little bit. Because I think I want to do that. I think I want to cut off. So that's I need 12 more. If that's the case, I need 12 more. I'm not taking them too awful thin because my clay is soft and I may regret that later. 
at the end I may be doing really really skinny pieces just trying to make sure I have enough slices. That happens to me a lot. This black corner isn't all that um, what's the term? What's the word I'm looking for? It's not exact. It's not very pointy. That one is. But this one's not. And I'm not, I haven't squished those ones onto the lid very well because I might have to move them. If I've got it too far this way, when I get to the end it hangs off, that would be bad. So I'm just going to leave them loose for now. And stick them down when I have them where I want them. Now as you can see too, if you're paying attention, I'm rolling this piece every so often. Because like anything else, when you push down on the clay, it distorts enough. Oh, it didn't cut all the way through. It distorts enough that if you keep cutting from one side always, eventually your bottom piece spreads out and it's wider. And then at some point you're, you're going to have to try and adjust the edges to make something fit. Because it's gotten wider and wider and wider and then your pattern stops lining up. So, the way I have found to combat that is to flip it every so often. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I need four more. Flip it every so often and that way it kind of spreads evenly. It's still not always perfectly square, and I see some people that somehow manage to have all their cane pieces perfectly square all the time. I don't know how they do it. I can never seem to do it. I may get some corners nice once in a while because you're putting pressure on it. So it's push. See it? See this? Here's a good example. So as you can see, this side is skinnier than this side, and that's probably just from me talking while I do this instead of turning it as often as I should. So all the pressure has been on the top and the bottom, and it has kind of flattened it down a little bit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That should be enough, I hope, to cover this lid. And I'm just doing this on screen simply because I don't want to go on to the next section until I finish what I'm working on. that look like that? I believe so. That obviously doesn't match up. No matter which way I turn it, so it has to be this one. And I think this one was wrong in the first place. I think maybe So that looks more like it matches up, but this one doesn't now, because I was trying to match it to that. So does this make sense if I put these two sides together and the pattern matches up, and then I push it up against the next one, does that make sense? Does everything line up? This is one of the ones that got squished a little when I was cutting, so this edge isn't lining up. See what I mean? It doesn't take much at all before you're... you're pieces distort and your edges don't line up quite the way you expect them to. You have to be really careful not to get sidetracked and just keep cutting. Because I do it so often that uh, it just eventually adds up and you end up with a piece that's really big and you're, you're trying to get it like this one. You're trying to kind of reduce it down on one side to get it into where you need it to fit. Hopefully I'm not sticking my head in the camera or sliding off the camera because I'm kind of concentrating on what I'm doing. And usually when that happens, I end up kind of doing this and just kind of easing it back to where I need it. And I don't want to push down too much because again, I might have to move all these if it turns out that I've gotten too close to this edge. What the heck is this doing? It must be this side. That one looks decent, that one looks decent. So it turns out that one, one corner shows more black wrapped around the corner than the other. So maybe that's how I need to tell when I've got the right sides together. 
This one here doesn't show an awful lot of black on the edge, but that one shows more. I don't know if you can tell. So that might be the sign. There's always at least one thing that stands out that makes it a little bit easier to tell if you've hit the right side. It takes a while to find it, but it's usually there. Do, 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 do. This is time consuming, I apologize. I know that this is probably boring to watch. That one's gonna have to be wiggled around, which I can't do yet because again, I might have to move it. I'm trying to remind myself not to glue these things down really well. That looks like a nice match there. So that might be correct. This has to nudge a little bit. I really like how the pattern's coming out though. And remember that all of these whitish parts, not the pure white, the whitish parts is translucent. So once it is baked, it's going to be see-through. Now this isn't really meant to be a candle holder because it's got a lid like this, but I suppose if you've got those flameless candles, you could do that. You could put flameless candles in this thing and then put the lid on it and it would shine through the top and the sides and the bottom and that might be nifty. That might be nifty. This is hitting the edge and rolling over the edge a wee smidge. And that could mean that all the work I just did has to get undone so that I can move it all that way a little bit. Isn't that lovely? I love it when this kind of thing happens. Because it is quite a bit of work to get all this stuff lined up, so it's kind of frustrating when you find out it's all wrong. But that's part of the... What the heck? Not that way. It's that way. There we go. Sometimes I lose my mind mid-thought. Mid the train leaves the station without the driver at the helm, or I don't know what you want to call it. So how much am I hanging over? We can see. I just have to wiggle them all up that way, just a little tiny smidge. And I might be able to do that without taking it all off. If I just do that, and then nudge them up there. Hopefully that wasn't too much, because there's nothing more annoying, it's annoying enough to do this, but then if you come along afterwards and found out you've gone too far the other way, that's always fun too. It just cheers you right up. Now you can put these things on here, and I've just moved that one that I already had all lined up. You can put these things on here, um, with gaps in between them if you want to. It doesn't have to be tight up against each other when you first lay them down because you're going to squish them together anyways to make everything line up. This, the idea of this is to get your pattern lined up enough to have your layout right. Because you don't want to smooth as you go, really. You want to, you want to lay everything down first and then smooth because sometimes you have to move things and wiggle them around. So it's easier just to get everything in place and then to go back and made up all your patterns. You, you gotta get the basics made it up. It doesn't have to be, I think I have that one wrong. Everything doesn't have to be a perfect match at this point. You just have to know that your pattern is the right corners together. That's not. All right, because at this point, once we have this on here, and it's better, it's more centered than it was, it's overhanging a little bit on each corner and that's it. I could deal with that. So here's the pattern that we're getting. And I think it's pretty, and when I, I'm gonna set this aside, I'm not gonna do this now, because it'll take too long, but I'm just gonna kind of roll my fingers together along the edges of each of these pieces and push that clay together so that it seals. And then after that's all done, then you smooth. 
um, and I can't smooth. Some people smooth with their fingertips. They just kind of pet it, they say, or rub it to get it nice and smooth and to get rid of all the dips and edges. My hands are too hot. I, I actually end up smearing clay. I think I can show you that. I, I, I was doing it without thinking over here. And somewhere in here, I believe. Yeah, if you can see here, I smeared the clay. And that's just me doing this with my thumbs. But the color um, moves when you move the clay, obviously. And it had got hot and I hadn't noticed and it had smeared. So when I do mine, I end up putting a piece of saran wrap or an old wrapper from one of the, the clays or something over top between my hand and the clay and I smooth through that just so that it doesn't get quite so soft. Anyway, so that was a totally long aside that we really didn't need to do, I suppose, but I wanted to make sure I had the right size. So I can now take this and reduce it down even farther. And so because you've already seen me doing this and it's probably a, a long video at this point, I'm going to do this off camera and I'm going to come back when I've got this reduced. And hopefully by then I'm also going to have an idea of what I want to make as an accent cane out of this and the white and the black that I have left. Because that's all I've got left. So we will see if I can come up with something in that amount of time that will uh, help me out. Alright, so as I'm working away here and I'm looking at this, I finally realized what the colors remind me of. It reminds me of watermelons. Because we got the red in the middle and the white around the skin and then we got the green and the black. How funny is that? For some reason that just popped into my head. So anyways, I have reduced it down. It's not quite square anymore now that I've been working on it. However, it is reduced. And I'm a little disappointed, I have to say, in that piece I just cut because it looks almost like we've lost our entire, hopefully the other side is not the same, it looks like we've lost our round bit in the center. You see what I mean? So I don't know what happened with this end. Maybe I got the part that was distorted. That's better. Okay, I was a little worried. I must have gotten a part that had distorted or had an air bubble or something and I've lost it lost the curl. So we're going to start from this end where there's still a curl. But anyhow, it is reduced down like so. Oh, my dog has such a rough life. Like so. And so I think that that should fit nicely on the side of my dish. So I'm going to set that aside and do that some other time. And I'm going to fix my whiny dog. And then we're going to work on something with these colors that I have left for my accent cane. And I'm just going to pop that in the fridge while I'm working on it. So I'll be right back. All right, the dog has been rescued. Um, now, I haven't quite decided what I want to do with these yet. But I know I have way more green sitting here than I know what to do with. So my pattern is going to have to include lots of green. And since I have more green than I do white and black, I'm probably going to cut the green in half and use it twice. So either I'm going to make stripes and layers. That's got some red stuck to it. Or something. So we'll cut this in half. And we're going to trim this guy up. Basically, we kind of have to make our stacks or whatever we do the size of our smallest piece. And that is the white. This I do have more white if I wanted to. I could probably just, I probably should. I do have more white and more black, but I don't want to waste it. I don't want a huge cane. I just want enough to do the outside edge of that container. So right now, I'm just going to work with what I have. I'm just cheap and lazy that way. So this is black that I had already done up that's left. And I'm going to trim the two to match. like so. 
and kind of in my head I think I want to make another spiral but a spiral with many layers of color obviously I don't want the black against the white I think I want to put green black black green white green that's what I'm thinking black green white green or green black whatever whatever you get the idea you, you hear what I'm saying right I want to make a stack and I want to put green in between the white and the black oh I don't know what he wants this time he was stuck on the slippery floor he doesn't like the slippery floor because he has fallen down a few times he has hip dysplasia and the slippery floor now scares him because he's fallen down a few times so he had gotten himself onto the slippery floor because the younger dog thought he might have spotted a chunk of food so the older dog followed him over to make sure that if there was food he was not left out there was no food but anyways he came over to check and then he got himself on the slippery floor and he was afraid to leave the slippery floor so I had to go and when I met this dog he was 120 pounds he's not a small guy so anyways I had to go over and push him back over onto the floor that he's willing to walk on and that's where he's now laying and complaining he's just sitting on the edge of the floor upset maybe it's his dignity that's hurt because I had to push him off the anyways life with the Grumpy old dog is always fun. He's a sweetheart and I love him, but I, I don't wish he could talk because I don't think he'd ever shut up, but I would like to be able to know what's wrong in a way that is something I can fix so that I can make him happy, but I have yet to figure out what that is and in the meantime I get a lot of, a lot of upset puppy, whiny puppy stuff. Frustrating. Okay, so we have green, white, green, black. And do I want to put it through the pasta machine so that it's thinner? Like I do, I'm going to thin down one end first so it goes in nicer because it is quite thick. So I'm just going to thin down this end to give it an easier start in the pasta machine. Don't tell me he's backed up onto that floor again. Yes, he has. I don't know why he's backing himself onto the floor. All right. So I have a long stack and it's quite flat now. Hopefully it still shows the colored layers when I trim it. I think it does. Oh my goodness gracious, one second. All right, let's try this for the 25th time. So basically, um, I'm going to trim, I trimmed that end. I'm gonna trim this end to the short aside. So what I'm going to do with that waist, I don't know. But I now have a nice thin piece. I think I should get a nice bullseye out of it if I can get it started. I think I want the black on the outside because it's got a nice strong contrast to the other stuff. So I'm going to pinch it and try and get so there's no air bubbles in there before I start rolling. I have a bad habit of having air bubbles in my centers of my bullseyes. Because I, I don't like sticking my fingerprints all in there trying to get it nice and tight. Oh, that black was a little too thin, I guess. All right. So we have a spiral with three colors, four stripes, and I'm going to try and make sure that's nice and round. 
and all nice and smooth so our edge is fixed. And we're going to trim that. I think it shows up nicely if you can see it in the light. And because everything else is square, I now want to take this and make it square. And that hopefully will reduce it. So this is, I'm sorry, the size that I need has to go on here. It, obviously it's too large. So I need to make it smaller. And I think while I will, while I am making it square, it will automatically reduce a certain amount. So that kind of works in my favor. So I'm just going to flatten, roll, and flatten. And I find if I keep fingers on this side and push in one direction, I can kind of get it to stretch out the way I want. Like so. Am I the only one out there that has an old dog that is, is almost as frustrating as he is adorable? Like, I love him. I do. I keep saying it. I'm reminding myself, maybe, that I do love him and he's old and when he's gone I will miss him. But sometimes they just make you crazy. Because now he's standing out the door wanting outside. Alright, so if we can see the end, this end, because I have my hand on it, it wasn't really popping out as much as the other end. So maybe you can see that it's now a nice square spiral. And I want to see if it's going to fit. And the beauty of this is it'll make a nice pattern, but I don't need to match it to anything. It's black all the way around the outside. So there's no pattern matching to worry about. It's not going to be it's going to be a little busy because it is a green spiral. Obviously, there's colors there. But um, I could just go around that outside edge and I'm not... I feel like I, if I do a square like this and I fill something that's the width of the square, I'm kind of robbing myself of the pattern that takes place here and here. Because all you're getting is the pattern that takes place here and here. So you've made all this interesting stuff that isn't touching anything else, so it's not doing anything. So something like this in that area, I figure will, I don't know, it makes more sense to me than having half a pattern. So I'm going to use this and try and sharpen up my corners a little bit, but it is about the right size. And then I'm going to use this for that edge. Um, I don't know if you really want to see all of this stuff because it's gonna take me a while to get it all done. I could probably just do it and speed it up so it's not too awful bad for you. Once you've seen somebody cutting cane, it's kind of, you've seen them all, you don't need to see it anymore. And I just want to give myself some sharp corners. Perhaps if you've got something in the, the video that you find not interesting or just, just makes the video way too long and it bores you, Leave me a message and say, yeah, yeah, don't bother speeding up reducing the cane. We don't need to see that. Just skip ahead and we'll be happy. Because I feel like I, you know, I don't want to leave out something if someone's a newbie and they haven't reduced canes before. Maybe skipping ahead would not help them any. So, leave me a line if I'm doing too much stuff here. Otherwise, I'll come back in a bit.
right, so as you can see, I've got my pieces roughly laid on there. This is how it looks. They're not joined together yet. They're not joined to this yet. This isn't joined together yet. But it gives you some sort of idea what I mean about a contrast pattern. So if this was all this pattern, it might look pretty. It is a pretty pattern. It's not too busy. But it looks sharper, I think, when it has some sort of contrast line. I keep saying contrast pattern because I can't think of another way to say it. If it has a cane that's got a different color combination or a different shape or something just to give some form of interest. Everything about the caning has to do with the interest as far as I'm concerned. Um, you don't want it to be like everything else. You don't want it to be bland. You want it to be unusual. You want it to have some character. So that's where I've gotten with that. So I'm going to set that aside now and I have to move on to the cane that I put in the fridge. So I'm going to trade. I'm going to put this in the fridge now. I'm going to get the other one out. And then I'm going to start putting cane pieces on here. And I'm not going to do the bottom. I'm going to leave the bottom plain. But I am going to do around the sides. Um, there's a little dip here. The handle does go down a little bit. So I may have to work around that. But I'm going to do the whole thing um, without yakking at you. Because that way I can speed it up. Again, this video is getting pretty long. So I will do what I can to get this all sped up for you. And uh, get to the end of this project. So we can all move on with our lives. But I'm, I'm liking it. I like the way it came out so far. I think it's going to look really sharp. All right, before I move on to the rest, I just want to point out what I just did. Um, so when I got around to the edge, there was the last piece and it, the spacing was nice. It would have fit in there nicely. However, there was an odd number of pieces used to go around the, the container, the dish. And that meant that the last piece wasn't going to line up by pattern. It was lining up opposite. And I took the pieces off here because if I'm going to have a glaringly obvious mismatch of pattern, I'd rather have it in a less obvious area. So now instead of being here, which is a nice open side and plain view, it's kind of tucked under the handle. So it's still not all that pretty having the mismatch pattern here and here, but it looks better than it would have. So I finished the first row. I have straightened out my bottom edge. Um, it's not smoothed yet. They're not mated yet. By that I mean I haven't pushed the edges all together yet. 
but it's starting to come out pretty cool. So I will go back to what I was doing and finish the bottom row and uh, then come back and we'll talk some more. Alright, so that was not without its issues, as you saw. Um, the thing I always tend to forget is that when you're working on one side and you've already got the other side done, if you happen to set your work down because you're farting around and you're not paying attention and you push on the stuff you've put down, you distort it. So as you can see, I was working on that side, I made the mistake of setting this side down and I have squished because what I was doing, if you're wondering why I didn't go all the way to the top, there's a little tiny lip on this glass dish that's got an edge that's visible. And I decided the easiest thing would be to put my clay under that visible edge. And so as you can see, I distorted it by pushing down on it when I was doing the other side. And when I first saw it, I went, oh no, that's horrible, I've ruined it. And I thought I was going to have to pick these pieces out and put fresh pieces in. But now that it's had a chance, I mean, that one there is skewed sideways as well. See, the center of the pattern is over here, and the center of the piece should be over there. So I somehow managed to push that sideways while I was at it. But now that I'm looking at it, it's not so bad. Now that I've had a chance to calm down and stop kicking myself. So we have two layers. Now I'm going to have to go along, and I'm going to have to do something with the ones under here. I haven't decided if I'm going to trim them off or I'm just going to leave them as is, and I might just leave them as is. You can see it through the top a little bit, but that's not a bad thing. Um, and if I get my light under this, I don't know if you'll be able to see, if I put this up the right way, how it's going to show with the translucent. So I think it's cool. But I still have a whole bunch of smoothing to do and a whole bunch of uh, mating the edges to do. And then I'm going to smooth the bottom edge and the top edge. And then I will bake. So I'm going to do that off camera. And I will come back. I did, however, take a second because my husband phoned. 
And so while I was talking to him and I couldn't have the camera going, I did take a minute and kind of push the edges of this together. So all the edges here are now fairly tight up against one another. When I start smoothing to get rid of my fingerprints and the ridges and things like that, it'll smooth out even more and it'll spread into the little nooks and crannies because every so often you'll have a little bit here where you can still see some light through it. But that usually takes care of itself and I do have my favorite tool for doing this is my big ball tool. Um, simply because it's wide enough. If you do it with a small ball tool, which seems to fit nicely in that groove, it'll smooth it down, but it makes a more noticeable valley in the clay than the big one does. The big one has such a wide surface that the outside circle is almost flattish. And I was putting these wide, well not wide, deep little grooves in my clay using the skinnier one and then having to spend a whole bunch of time trying to smooth those back out. So I find my big ball tool works a little better and sometimes you can go side to side to get rid of it. Sometimes you just run up and down and you only really have to let the weight of the tool. It takes a long time, you gotta sit there and rock back and forth with it because if you try to put more pressure on it, it will distort the pattern or it will, as I said, make a groove in the clay that you then have to smooth out. So it's just kind of sitting around watching TV and doing this. And that's the next step. So at some point I will have to sit around and do all this. And then once that's done, then I have to put a piece of plastic over it and I will kind of smooth the whole thing and that's to get rid of the valleys or grooves that the tool might have put in while I was trying to get rid of the seams. So it's, there's a many step process involved in getting this smooth and I never ever 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 get them as smooth as some of the people I've seen because I just don't have the patience. Um, I really don't and it's not as important to me. I just realized that I had an air bubble that never went away and in fact actually made a hole in the clay. So I'm just going to fix that while I'm talking. As I was saying, I don't have the patience to get everything perfect. Um, I'm not aiming for perfection, so to spend that much time and effort on it to me is pointless. I think things that are handmade are special because of the time and effort and thought and creativity that went into it. Not because we expect it to be perfect. If we wanted something that was perfect, we would go and get something made by a machine and not something homemade. We want we want it to look like someone put their time and effort into it. We want to see maybe the odd fingerprint because that means someone touched it. We want it to be different than something we could just go to a store and buy because otherwise what's the point? You know, in my opinion. Not everybody thinks that way, but in my opinion that's what it is. I do not try to make everything I make perfect um, and make myself insane trying because it would. It would make me insane. I just don't have the patience. Some people can do it. Some people, um, Teresa Salgado, Tiny Pandora, her stuff is absolutely beautiful and it's all nice and smooth. Maybe she goes afterwards and sands a whole bunch of it. I don't know. I've tried sanding. I'm not that patient with that either. But I will take the effort to mate the stuff. I will take the effort to run something over the seams to make sure that the seams are glued together and there's no light showing through it. And I will make the effort to smooth the top so that I don't have a lot of ridges and valleys. It, you will be able to feel still where the pieces meet here and there. But that's, that's you know, where I kind of draw the line. So, as I said, I'm going to do this next bit off video. Um, I'm done talking for the day, I think. I've had enough talking for the day. But when I am done with it, I will uh, bake it and then I will put a picture of the finished product on the end of the video so that you can see what happened and decide whether or not you liked it, decide whether or not you want to try something like that yourself. So thank you very much for sticking around with me over this extremely long video. I'm, I'm sure at this point I'll probably have to make it into three parts and I know that that's kind of excruciating to have to go back and watch three parts of a really long video. That's why I tried to do some speeding up on the video for you. And at some point I will be doing something fun with all these bits and pieces, but I don't think that's going to end up on a video. Um, what was I saying? Oh, thanks for coming. That's what I was saying. And if you would like to go and see any of my other videos, because this obviously is not the first one I've done, there have been others which I've been talking about. 
you can go to, I will put the websites and stuff on the end of the video as well in case you don't hear me very well or it flashes by too fast. You can go to my YouTube channel. Presumably you're on that now or at least you're looking at a video of mine. The channel that has all the rest of the videos of mine is actually youtube.com slash joygillard and that will show all the other videos that I've done as well as the other parts of this one. Um, and also, if you want to find out more about other things I do, because it's not all on YouTube, I do have a blog that I'm working on. Um, the blog is titled Adventures in Menopause, but the uh, address to get to the blog is actually http colon backslash, or double backslash, I should say, and then surviving life over 40. So you can certainly come there and uh, find out what's going on, leave me some messages. I'd love to hear from people. It's nice to have uh, some feedback on some of the stuff I'm doing, which is why I've changed my, I'm now using a camera on a tripod. So this is my first video where I've actually managed to do a camera on a tripod. And so hopefully that changes things and makes it easier. You get to see my belly now, that's, that's new and exciting. Um, it's not quite as much of a close up as having the sus suspended camera, but I also think it's not quite as wobbly. I can stop and start the video without getting that little bit of a shake and wave there that was going on every time I had to do it with my phone. So I hope that's an improvement. So again, feedback helps me. If you have any other ideas on ways that I can improve, please feel free to let me know. Toodles for now. Bye.